And now for our next news special report. Have you ever wondered about those left behind in the wake of war? What about the interpreters who served as the voice between nations, now silenced by circumstances beyond their control? Today, we delve into the plight of those interpreters left behind in Afghanistan following the United States withdrawal. Our journey starts in August of 2021, as the United States concluded its two-decade-long presence in Afghanistan. As the dust of departing military aircraft settled, a swift and chilling realization dawned. The Taliban had regained control. For many U.S. veterans, this marked an ending steeped in frustration and disappointment. But it was the fate of their Afghan allies, the interpreters and support personnel that stirred deep concerns. These interpreters served as the crucial bridge between cultures, languages and ideologies. Their work, often at great personal risk, facilitated the U.S.'s efforts in Afghanistan. Yet, in the aftermath of the withdrawal, they found themselves in a precarious and dangerous situation. The Taliban's rapid gains left these allies vulnerable, their lives hanging in a balance that seemed to tilt ominously towards danger with each passing day. As we move forward to August of 2022, a year after the U.S. pullout, the struggle to evacuate those left behind continues, largely unnoticed by the world. Mike Turber, a former senior intelligence analyst and now a security consultant as well as an investigative journalist with 5x5 Five Five News, emphasizes this ongoing struggle. According to Turber, the war's abrupt end made it impossible to evacuate everyone in time, leaving many trapped in a country now under the Taliban's control. The impact of this control has been stark and brutal. Reports of executions, amputations and widespread abuse of women are rampant, painting a grim picture of life under the Taliban. Yet despite these horrifying conditions, the evacuation of those left behind seems to have slipped from global consciousness. But not everyone has turned a blind eye. Individuals like Mike Turber are striving to rescue those left behind. Despite having over 5,000 people on his manifest sent to the Department of State via Florida Congressman Brian Mast, Turber's efforts have met with little assistance from the Biden administration. Since the withdrawal, Turber has struggled to get any assistance and resorted to using personal resources to help those we left behind. He, and others like him, banded together to create a team of like-minded individuals who desperately work to get food, medicine and shelter for those who they are trying to rescue. They need your help. Although many successful rescue have been made, many are still in need. And so, we find ourselves at a crossroads of conscience and duty. We have a moral obligation to these interpreters who risked their lives to aid foreign troops in a time of war. It's time for us to stand up and support the efforts to rescue those left behind. Whether it's raising awareness about their plight, advocating for governmental action, or donating to organizations dedicated to their rescue, every little bit helps. You can help the most by supporting the ongoing efforts by donating to the organizations directly. Links are in the description of this special report. Remember, in the face of adversity, the power of united voices can echo louder than the silence of indifference. Let your voice be heard. It's time to bring them home. Hello, I'm reporting this uh, to 5x5 News. Um, my family is consisted of nine people. My dad, my mom, my five sisters and my one brother. After the Taliban take over, a man took us out of Kabul and hit us in Kalakon because a group of Taliban asked him to find my dad for them. Then he sent our report by one of his relatives to American evacuation authorities. Six days after the U.S. left Afghanistan, Mr. Mike contacted us and after that, Commander Mark. We have changed our location during six months, six times, uh, with the help of Mr. Mike and Mr. Mike, and thanks to both of them. During the six months we live in the safe house, in sort of house arrest, and we cannot go out. All of our family members are frustrated and the kids are being depressed. My mom and my sister Masuda had surgery, and my dad's spinal bits are displaced and he cannot move alone. 
my mom and my dad uh, need medicine and we cannot afford to buy. The kids cannot go to school and we don't have enough food for Ramadan. I hope that anyone can help us. Please help us. We need urgent assistance to be evacuated from Afghanistan as soon as possible. Worth to say that we live in a very bad circumstances because Taliban are after my dad, me and Mike, please help us. Hello everybody. I'm an Afghan girl and I'm delivering this report to 5x5 News. We are two families living in Kabul, Afghanistan under high threat to Taliban take over. Most of our family members are women and the life of women under Taliban is very difficult. We are deprived of education and work. Day by day, some girls are kidnapped and tortured or killed and their dead bodies are found after a week or some are lost forever. The fundamental rights of women and human rights are widely related. The general situation of public economy is critical and now we are living in a critical situation and have an unknown future. We hope that the people and the government of the United States help us. And thanks to Mr. Mike and Mr. Mark, who helped us to go to the safe house and provided food and medicine for us.